I do want to show you like a little method that I use to work through these proofs to make it a little bit easier and give you a process. So the first thing I do is I look at the givens and I say to myself, you know, why are they telling me these givens? These are generally clues or hints, something that you can figure out and then add as a statement in your proof. So let's go to uh, the givens here, WY bisects segment XZ. So WY, let's see, here's WY bisects XZ. So WY is cutting XZ in half, meaning that this half is congruent to that half. Now when I figure something out, and you might want to do this too, is go ahead and mark it on the diagram so you don't have to remember it. You can see it visually on the diagram. Another thing that sometimes students get confused by is they'll say, okay, XR is congruent to ZR, and they'll also say WR is congruent to YR. That's only true if um, let's see, if XZ is bisecting WY, but that's not what we have here. We have WY is the one that's doing the cutting in half. WY is cutting XZ in half. So XR is congruent to XZ. And let's make that a step in our proof. Segment XR is congruent to uh, segment, uh, what did we say? Um, ZR, right? ZR. Okay, and that's because of the definition of segment bisector. So I'm just abbreviating a little bit here. Now you notice I skipped number one, step one. Generally what students like to do, and I like to do it too just to get it out of the way, is go ahead and write down the givens as your first step. So you don't have to do it that way. Sometimes it makes the proof flow a little bit better if you put some of the givens, you know, as you need them in the proof. But a lot of students just like to write them first, so I'll go ahead and do that here. So WY uh, bisects uh, XZ, and then we also have WX is parallel to ZY. Now, why is this a hint that WX is parallel to ZY? Now, I like to draw an arrow if the two lines are parallel. The other thing I like to do is I like to extend these lines a little bit further, and you can see that this is like a transversal right here. So I'm gonna extend that. So what we have here is we have a diagram, kind of like what we learned earlier in geometry, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and we know that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So in this diagram, what we can see here is, is that this angle, uh, let's just say right here, is congruent to that angle right there. So what I did is I used this transversal. Notice that this angle has this transversal as one of its sides and this parallel line as one of its sides. And this angle has this common transversal as one of its sides and this other parallel line as one of its sides. So that's the key. Sometimes students mistakenly would use these two angles or they'll pick another set of two angles, but you wanna make sure it's the angles that are made up of that common transversal and the two parallel lines. So again, we might like to mark that on the diagram. I also like to make it as a step in the proof when I figure something out from the givens. So that means that angle XWY, angle XWY is congruent to angle, uh, let's see, ZYW, ZYW, and that's by alternate interior angle. So I'm just gonna abbreviate. Okay, now let's see what we have so far. We've got uh, angles, we have some sides that are congruent. It looks like that's all we can figure out from the given. So the next thing I like to do is jump into the diagram, kind of see if there's anything that I can prove uh, that's congruent in this diagram. Keeping in mind that what we're trying to prove is that triangle XWR, that's this triangle, is congruent to triangle ZYR, that's this triangle right here. So one thing to kind of watch out for is like common sides, you know, if they share a side, that, then that side's gonna be congruent. Also, you wanna pay attention to when you have this X pattern, the angles that are across from each other are gonna be congruent by vertical angles. And that's exactly what we have here. We have this angle is congruent to this angle because you see how that X is formed. Those are vertical angles, they're congruent. So let's go ahead and add that to our, our, proof, our two column proof here. We're gonna say angle ZRY, ZRY is congruent to angle XRW, XR. Uh, w, and we said that's by vertical angle theorem, or you could just say vertical angles. Now, it looks like we have enough to prove the two triangles are congruent now using the angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. Now, when you write your triangle congruence uh, statement, you wanna make sure that the corresponding vertices match up, the corresponding angles, the corresponding sides, etc. But what we're trying to prove here, that's always gonna be your last step in your proof. So step number five, Triangle XWR is congruent to triangle ZYR, and that's gonna be by angle, angle, side. Now, one thing I wanna just show you over here to the side real quick is say you have two triangles. See, when you do angle, angle, side, okay, what you want is you wanna be able to go around the triangle 
you know, either clockwise or counterclockwise in order. So it's like angle, the next angle you come to, the next side. You don't want to jump around like angle and like this side and this, you know, it has to go in that order, angle, angle, side. That's very important. Now it could be on this triangle here or something like uh, angle, angle, side. So here I'm going around counterclockwise, but you can see if I reflect this triangle, the side's gonna match up, the two angles are gonna match up. And again, you're using the angle, angle, side. So great job, I hope that helps you understand how to work with triangle congruence proofs a little bit better. I'll have a playlist right there that you can check out having uh, more experience with working with these two column proofs. If you wanna check that out, go ahead and do that. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.